Hey guys, Multiclassic Gamer here, welcome you back to more Let's Play SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. In the last episode, we finished off the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. In this episode, I said I was going to go to the final world of the game, but you know what guys? I don't care, okay? I'm too tired to finish off this game, okay? I am just... I need to take a nap, okay? So, I'm just going to stand between... in in the middle of this conveniently placed circle of rocks and I'm gonna go sleep okay instead of going to the final world game in fact let's just not go there anymore okay let's not finish this game let's just yeah let's just let's just take a nap and forget this ever happened okay good night everyone With sleep comes dreams. What mischief can be found in this sub-aquatic somnambulant realm? Dream bubbles. I'm surrounded by dream bubbles. I wonder what that means. Gary, what are you doing here? Wow. Oh, so I'm dreaming. Well, then first thing I'm going to do is dream myself up a mustache. Wow. Thanks, Gary. It does make me look more rugged, doesn't it? Wow. More tasks? Well, I could use more golden spatulas, but where should I start? Wow. Wow. You mean each dream bubble has a golden spatula in it? Wow. I'm ready. Wow. Yes, Gary, I'll be careful. So it turns out that the final world of the game is located within Spongebob's subconscious. So there never was a ninth world of the game. Spongebob is dreaming it up. And yet, the golden spatulas, shiny objects, and Patrick's socks they collect in this world are collected in real life. So, theoretically, it's almost it almost reminds me of the Matrix. Well, actually, not really. But still, you know, it's just a... Just a clever little reference to the Matrix, I suppose. I don't know. I don't think they were actually going for... I don't think that's actually what they were going for in this level. But still, it's pretty awesome nonetheless. Even though it doesn't technically exist. Well, then again, none of the other eight worlds of the game exist in real life. But still, regardless, it's SpongeBob subconscious. What do you expect? So, first, starting off, um, we're going to be dealing with some, some platforming a little bit. And we got that annoying robot that, once again, I I neglected to find the name of in between episodes. So, we're just going to have to wait until after this LP. We're going to look at the, at the bios for every robot on screen. And only then will we actually find out what that robot's name is, okay? So, um... The first task, and not, not to mention the music here... Oh my god, I don't even know how to describe the music. But when I listen to music in this world... Um, it just, I don't know, it's like so surreal. Like, almost like you're high or something, like, I don't know. It's, regardless of whether it sounds like you're high or not, it's, it's really awesome. Like, it's just probably the most surreal theme in the game. To be, to be completely honest, actually. And, but... Also, in addition to that, the missions here are also a lot of fun. Like, you're going to be going, like, pretty much this level, in addition to being somewhat of a theoretical reference to the Matrix, it also is kind of a reference to the Sleepy Time episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, where he travels, you know, to other other characters' dreams. And that's what, what you'll be doing to get most of the golden spatulas in this area. But to get his first one, you obviously bubble, bat, bubble bowl that um, paddle thing at the top of the ramp and you make a ball drop down from a floating door that's downwards and that ball is going to roll down here and that will allow you to get up to the golden spatula that's up there. Yep, that should be the first hint to how just unbelievable the missions are in this, in this area. But again, like I said, it's Spongebob's dream. So the creators can pretty much do anything they want. This level can make as much 
nonsense as they possibly wanted to, okay? And they had a good excuse, too. You know, because... I don't know. You know, Ninth World, simply put, the last world of the game is by far the craziest, and for good reason. It's SpongeBob Stream. That's, that's pretty much how it is. Also, some of you may realize that as far as the theme goes, even though it's, like, really surreal, it's pretty much, like, it's kind of an extent, like, it also, in addition to being, like, really surreal, it actually sounds like the, the battle theme where you, that you hear when you're fighting mid-boss. So we're going to slide down this slide real quick. That's going to lead us to Sandy's, to the first dream bubble, which is Sandy's dream. And now he's got the little spatulas for nice little scenery on the slide. But before... Oh, also, um, to get to each, uh, dream, each, uh, dream bubble, you have to pay, pretty much, you have to pay clams each time you go to a new, a new dream bubble. And this clam right here will lead us to Squidward's dream. And then there will be one that leads to Mr. Krabs' dream, and then the, there will be one that leads to Patrick's dream. So, pretty much, you're gonna have to pay in order to get, make your way through this world, pretty much. But still, despite that, and also the prices don't go any higher than 1,000 shiny objects each. So, at this point, even though you're as far as you're going to get in the game, the game goes really easy. Like, the game gets starts to get really cheap as far as how much you have to pay for, I mean, well, actually, not really necessarily cheap, but, you know, it makes you, it, like, it, it goes really easy on you as far, the pri as far as the prices for the shiny objects go at this point. So, that's really cool, too. You know, you don't have to pay as much as you would in earlier levels, so it's pretty awesome. But still, regardless, in SpongeBob's dream, even even in Spo even even in SpongeBob's dream, he cannot escape from the robots. That's how bad it is. That's how bad the invasion is. But wait, hang on a second. If there's five of Patrick's socks in SpongeBob's dream, wait. And not only that, but the first sock we ever got in this game was in SpongeBob's attic. So technically. SpongeBob stole six of the 80 socks, technically, because five of them are in his are in his um, subconscious, and one of them is in his attic. So, basically, Patrick, I mean, SpongeBob actually has partial blame for the missing socks. But let's stop wasting time. Let's go. Let's head on into the first dream bubble, which is Sandy's dream. And holy crap! Once you see this, once you see this, just wow. Look at all that. This is Sandy, what Sandy dreams about. And it's pretty damn awesome. Wow, your dream is massive. Yeah, Larry, you couldn't have said it better. Everything in Texas is big, even dreams. Then you're just the right person to reach the spatula on top of that golden acorn. No! Sandy is probably the, you know, the least right person. You know, it's her dream, so she definitely cannot be the one to get it. My dream, my rules. I'll get that spatula faster than a Texas jackrabbit crossing a four-lane highway. All right, well, if it's your dream and your rules, why can't you just simply teleport over to that golden spatula? I mean, think about it. Like, if you were in those kinds of dreams where you can actually control, and I've, actually, I've never myself actually been in one of those, because for some reason, like, it's not easy to be in the type of dream where you can actually know what's going on, so... I mean, uh... I can't remember what that type of dream is called. I'm actually going to have to look it up. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'll meet you guys back here in a second because I'm actually going to look up on Google. The type there's, there's actually a name for the, for a kind of dream where you're actually aware of what's going on. You actually control the dream. So I'm going to be back in a second, guys. Okay, so the type of dreams that you have where you can actually control what's going on are called lucid dreams. So that means that pretty much this is where we are. We're inside a lucid dream, basically. And... By the way, I'm switching back to Sponge... Well, actually, I did that for no reason. Okay. Yeah, you only need... You're only gonna switch to SpongeBob when you're actually exiting the area, so I don't know why I did that, but... Okay. Let's, um... Yeah, let's, uh, swing across here and begin this crazy slide. And trust me, this slide is really fun. This is probably... Like, I don't know if this is actually true or not, but this could be the most fun part of the, a SpongeBob stream. I'm not actually sure, to be honest. And it's weird how they call it SpongeBob Stream, but for some, re but for actually for most of the world, you're actually going to other people's dreams. So, 
technically it's not SpongeBob's dream, unless he dreams about going to other people's dreams, which is kind of weird, because that'd be like Dreamception, basically. Which is really confusing. That's kind of where it gets really confusing. But, real quick, right here, jump off the slide, because there's actually a side Hello, mission you can Lincoln. do. That's what I need, a creature with a backbone! So, to do this side mission, you have to pay the clam 2,800 shiny objects. And... Who puts challenges in their own dreams? Squirrels? We're tough like that. Oh, you'll need to be real tough to make this series of swings. Wait a second. I just I just wondered something that I have never actually wondered before. Why is Sandy dreaming about plankton? I could do it in my sleep. You are asleep. As I said, in my sleep. Well, there's a golden spatula out there for you if you make it far enough. I'll do it so fast, it'll make your head spin faster than a horny toad on a merry-go-round. Horny toad? What the What? Why can't I ever just dream normal dreams of world domination? But this is not your dream. This is Sandy's dream, and you're in it. Why would you be... Why would Plankton be in Sandy's dreams? What kind of screwed up is that? Like, that is really screwed up that, that Sandy would actually dream about Plankton. Well, I know it's not necessarily about Plankton, but still, he's in the dream, which is kind of crazy on its own. Like, there is so much that... So much that doesn't make any sense, but still, like I said, they, they have every excuse to, they have really good excuses to make this, you know, pretty much as least amount of sense as possible. Holy crap, holy crap. I don't know how many flips I made there, but if you guys can count them, that'd be pretty awesome. Let's see how many flips you can actually make on here. I always make like some, I always make at least like a few flips do, doing this, but still it's, if you guys can actually count how many I, how many I'm doing here, that'd be cool in the comments, you know. Oh boy. Okay, there we go. Jesus, I thought, I thought I was never going to stop spinning, which would have been really crazy. But anyways, here's a side mission. Basically, you go over here and you fight a bunch of robots. That's pretty much how, what it is. And pretty much all you have to do, I think, is just destroy the duplicate and then pretty much after that, you just destroy the rest of the robots. And there you go, you get the golden spatula. Now, if I haven't mentioned yet, the missions here are ridiculously easy. Like, for a final world of the game, this is pretty damn easy. Like, I'll, I will definitely say, this is a lot easy. This is even easier than Click Clock Wood and Banjo Kazooie. Because you're not. Because, well, for one thing, you wouldn't have to collect all the. I call the almost shiny objects. Well, actually, you don't need a hundred to beat the world, but still. You know, you don't have to recollect anything if you die in this game. You just move on from where you were. And the game pre pre pretty much puts you really close to where you died. So, you know, practically the checkpoints alone make this game a lot easier than Banjo-Kazooie. Like, I will, def I will definitely say that. So I don't know why people keep on saying that this game is a Banjo-Kazooie ripoff, because it's not. But if it is, it's a pretty damn good one, because it's a good game, okay? And that's what's important. Okay. <clears throat> so for no reason, I'm going to destroy all these uh, Thunder Tiki's, just get extra shiny objects, and for shits and giggles. Also, Sandy dreams about UFOs, see? Over there. You can actually see UFOs in the distance. Which is pretty crazy, I gotta say. And there's also, like, a big clouds, wide open spaces, pretty much the way Sandy described Texas in, you know, in the, in the show itself. So, you know, it's, that's pretty cool. That the, you know, it just show, it just goes to show that Iron, he that Heavy Iron Studios actually does pay attention to the show when they're, when they made this game. And that, and I, and I applaud them for that. But before we actually um, springboard back over to where Plankton was and end off the episode there. We're going to grab this, uh, very well hidden sock over here. And this is the first sock of SpongeBob's dream. So. Ooh, do I really have to carry Patrick's yes, you do, Sandy. You have to carry 76 of them. Oh, yeah. At least you won't be like SpongeBob and have to carry 80 of them to Patrick. 
course, by then, you know, all, all our worries will be gone and we'll never have to worry about them ever again. But there we go. What do you have to say now, Plankton? I just beat that stupid challenge that I just made up entirely on my own. All this beautiful mayhem wasted on some brainless tin cans. I love you too, Plankton. Okay. So that's going to be it for today's episode. Let's play Battle for King Bottom. In the next episode, we are going to take on the rest of Sandy's Texas Ranger slide. He has the name of Texas Ranger slide because I just so happened to see a Texas Ranger badge off in the distance as I saw that. So, um, we're going to, that'll be it for today's episode, okay? Thanks for watching. Multiclass Gamer signing out. I hope you guys are looking forward to this world. Oh, yeah, this is the part of the music. Okay, let's just end off the episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.